Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. We go ahead with the question session and we start with, yeah, Ahmed, faddal. Rahi, please ask your question again, Akhi. Faddal, ya Rahi. The doctor has uh, prescribed my father to take uh, antibiotics every four hours, um, thus obviously not allowing him to fast. So does he have to pay the fidya or does he just make up the fast later on? Antibiotic for something which is chronical or non-chronical? Non-chronical. So he has a, a recent issue with his kidneys, which has just been found. And then it will be resolved, he said, or is this a permanent? No, inshallah, it will be resolved after. Then he has to make up for the fast. There is no such thing for fidya. Okay. It's clear, Quran says that if you are on a journey and if you are ill, then you have to compensate on other days. Now, not every person who is in a journey and not every person who is in a, an illness, okay, they are allowed to break the fast. The illness that, you know, you fear this illness that will increase, it will get worse. This illness that will affect you if you fast. That's the illness you break the fast with. But somebody that say, for example, had a, a little cut here. Just a little, nothing. I'm ill. I want to break my fast. No. But if it was like uh, when we have the, one of the scholars of the Tabi'een, uh, Ibn Sirin. Is Ibn Sirin or Ibn Musayyib? Now my head is not really going to focus. It's Ibn Sirin or Sayyid Musayyib? One of the two. He had he'd been breaking his fast and he had that deep cut in his finger. And he thought that maybe this will increase. He needs glucose and he needs to, you know, to break this fast. And also the journey, so it has to be a journey. So if it's a journey, uh, it's a travel, it's a travel. But if it's not a travel, you're just going from one A to B and you're still not traveling, for badly you don't really break the fast. Um, uh, and by the way, the journey and the travel and the, the, the illness had been left in general. So too much illness, a little bit of illness, as long as you fear that the illness will increase, will allow you to break the fast. Same thing, whether there's a journey to China, or a journey towards Scotland or Birmingham, it's a journey, regardless whether you go on plane or a train or on foot, it's a journey. So you are, they have the option to break the fast, but you have to compensate. Now, for those private messaging me about raising your hand like our brother Abu Suleiman, you need to go to the list of names, bottom right corner, there's three dots. Once you click that, you can raise your hand, okay? Hope that explains. Next question Are women allowed to wear loose trousers with a long top or are we only allowed jilbab, abaya, etc? You're allowed to put trousers and loose trousers as long as your covers, it covers all of it, <laughs> all the way to down. But he's talking about, I don't know how low she is she's talking about when she said trousers. So uh, you want to put like, for example, a skirt, it's not allowed because that sh the, 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 the trousers underneath show the legs. Okay, it shows the size of the legs anyway, regardless of how loose they are. Okay, so it has to be jilbab on top of it. No, can we, can we go to Abu Muhammad, please? Abu Muhammad, please don't unmute yourself. Admin will do it for you, otherwise, you'll be muted again. Yeah, um, I want to know what is there a difference between the amount of food you give for kafara or fidya? To the, poor, to the person. Uh, why Abu Muhammad, you're too far from the microphone? I don't know. <laughs> Can you get closer to the microphone, to the laptop or whatever you have? So is there any difference between the what, again, the kafara and the fidya? Regarding the feeding of kafara. The difference? Now, everybody's going to be surprised. What are you doing before? I was wearing my headset before. Okay, go ahead. Um, regarding the kafara and the fidya, is there a certain amount of food or is there a difference how much you feed for the person? Kafara of what? Can you just give me an example? Um, if the person fell into the... Sexual intercourse, for example, in Ramadan? Yeah. So he wants to make a kafara, which is feeding 60 poor people. That's yeah. if he's not able to free a slave or he's not able to fast two months consecutively. Okay, or kafar of an oath for three, five, feeding ten people. Yeah. Okay. Or, yeah. Or the fidya of which fidya are we talking about now? Uh, if his wife was pregnant or breastfeeding. Yeah. Well, 
both of them is called it'am, it'am and miskin, both of them, okay? Uh, and both of them as well, that you're allowed to give, so what you're allowed to give is from the average food. But the fidya, which is to do with the pregnancy and the, the elders, that there is a, a, a saying from one of the companions, that is Aisha Radullah ibn Abbas, that it is half a sa'a. Mm. There's something by the way. Mm. You're making can we mute again. the question as well? The can you, can Sheikh you... is answering. Yeah. So um, basically, that the um, a person is allowed to give half half a sa'a of barley, half a sa'a of wheat, uh, hinta wheat, in the case of the fidya. Whereas in the case of the kafara, there is no such thing. So in the kafara, you have to feed a poor person, it'am. Whereas in the case of the fidya, for the pregnant and for the breastfeeding, you could give half a sa'a, uh, two and a half kilos, well, one sa'a of rice, two and a half kilos for each day that you break the fast. So you could give 30, you could give, because of the saying of the companion, and we don't have any other companion to oppose that. Now. This sister is, she has a four month baby, four months old, and she tends to wake up after suhoor for a feed. So I sometimes have a few minutes to eat suhoor. If I start eating before Fajr starts, can I finish my food? And this happens regularly, even though I try to wake up early to eat. Is that a problem? So she's trying to wake up early, but she wakes up four minutes. Doesn't matter. She wakes up just before Fajr, uh, before suhoor. Before Fajr, is that right? I believe so, yeah. Yeah. Once she's, she's saying, starts, can she keep eating? But I think she's keep running out of time. Eating whatever she's got. Eating, that means what you have. So you have the plate. You've started before the Sahur, before, sorry, the Fajr. You started your Sahur before Fajr. You could continue, okay, until you could continue. I'll have to see the, these messages as well because they are updating me. Right. So the, uh, the, the, you could um, continue what you have, but you can't start something else. So if you have a cup, you finish it. You can't fill it up the cup. If you have, for example, the plate, you can't fill up the plate. You eat it. And you try your best. It doesn't matter if you had a number of times, you know, woken up just about before sahur. Because, you see, when you have a habit, I don't know how the habit is working with you because we know that the, the Fajr time is going earlier and earlier. So does your habit as well goes earlier and earlier with it? I mean, you woke up, for example, yesterday, for example, let's say 4 o'clock, and your sahur is 4.06, for example. Tomorrow is going to be 4.02, 4.03. So does your habit go 3 for 59? So you must have, I mean, I mean, so it's going to be going early and early. So please twist your habit to go and change it to be earlier, much earlier, so you could really eat proper food, inshallah, especially when you are pregnant as well. Now, by the way, saying four months pregnancy or not, it doesn't really make any difference. But saying pregnant, you are pregnant. So if you are feeling for yourself, for your he's baby. He's had a baby, Sheikh. The baby is four months old. He's already, oh, he's already waking her up. He's waking her up. That's why she's oh, having trouble. Forgive me. Forgive me, Sheikh. Right. So he's waking her up. Yes. Okay. I understand that. So he's waking her up, mashallah, just about six minutes before sahur. <laughs> we will, uh, inshallah. So we will tell you to the sister, don't worry. Keep eating until you finish what you've got. Don't make something new. But please now make your alarm to be earlier. Zakallah khair Ahmed for correcting me now. Jazak Sheikh. Can we have the next questioner, please? Assalamualaikum Sheikh. Um, uh, it's Abu Zakaria. Uh, Sheikh, my question is purely uh, if somebody is a young man and their neighbor is a single woman and he fears fitna from her and so he avoids her at all, at all costs. Is he excused for his uh, negligence of being a neighbor? Avoid at all costs. Why? To avoid uh, why at all costs. So, if, for example, does not send food to her. Because she, uh, uh, due to the fact that if she if he interacts with her, she starts to. No, uh, you don't have to interact. Being nice to the neighbor is basically. It doesn't mean you have to communicate directly with the neighbor. Okay. So if she is a lady, if you're talking about she's a girl and he's a man. Yeah. Okay. Then he cannot be. Is he married or not married? He's not married. 
If he's not married, then I would say being kind to the neighbor here is satisfying his lust more than he's being a nice to the neighbor. This is the so, thing, yeah. Yeah. So once he goes to the house, if he sees her, they just, you know, lower his and he's, you know, say salamu alaikum, and he enters the house. But if he mm. sees himself in a fitna that he will be pulled to a mm. chit chat with her, he keep away. Keep away as much as he can. Exactly. This, this is darura. The other one uh, is uh, so when we have said mahdur and ma'mur, the mahdur takes precedence. Mm. No. Look. Al hadr muqaddam al al mubih. This is the principle. The one prohibits takes precedence over the one that makes it permissible. No. The sister is asking that she recently had a proposal from a student of knowledge and her family accepted him because of his character is good. Um, but the problem is it's been over two years since they've been trying to get her married and her brothers are not, she's saying her brothers are not really doing their job as her guardians. And this person, he had retracted the uh, offer even though he wanted to get married with her. She's saying, my brothers have been delaying and not setting up meetings. What advice do you give me for this situation? What is upon me to do? And what advice should I give to my brothers? I mean, your brothers should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they should know that your, their sister is in dire need of uh, marriage because it looks like from the person's questioning that she's, she's in... She's approving that student and knowledge. She wants him. And the Prophet he said, La ara il I can't find anything better for those people who love one another except for marriage. So the marriage would solve everything. So I would say to the basically to the brothers to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as an advice for them and to look at the interest of their sister and to process the marriage in line with the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, when he said, if someone comes to you and you are pleased with his manners, pleased with his religion, then get him married. Otherwise, it will be fitna, fitna, tribulation, trouble, or fasad, mischief on the land. Each one will be fornicating because there is no marriage. So, if you have come to you somebody like this for two years, subhanAllah. Two years is not really allowed. That's not allowed. So um, she could seek the help of an imam, local imam. Tell him the problem. Inshallah, we'll tell them. Talk to them. Now. Can we have the next questioner, please? Uh, Salaamu Alaikum, Sheikh. Just one question. Um, my missus, she was pregnant for, I mean, for the first Ramadan, she couldn't fast. And for the second year because she was feeding my daughter so is it i mean what's the i mean for catching up with ramadan is it uh she has to i mean either fast for two months or is it she has to feed i mean the poor but sometimes you cannot feed the shall we i mean take it out as a money instead of the food if it's if it is permissible and uh, on the other hand some people they say you have to fast too much you cannot I mean, either feed the, the poor because he, you can fast by now when you are well. And thank you. Give me another question as well. Let me write the question. Better for me to get more answers. Uh, I mean, if there is... Had, no, 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 uh, if not they... you. I'm talking about somebody else. Another question, please. Hey, Kevin, ask... Sunna, please. Uh, sorry, actually, I've got I'm a written question. I'm taking another approach to make, take more questions now. Hold on. Can you please explain the correct Sunna method for a female to perform ghusl? There are many methods I hear about the female washing her hair where she doesn't have to wet it at all, only her it's scalp. Not, the question is how to make ghusl for the sisters. Yep. Don't have to wait a long question. I see, what is the you know, ghusl for the sisters? Now, nah, number three. Hold on. Give me another question. Ke Keva Sunna, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. The question is um, the reconciliation between the two ahadith when the Prophet said that we will never be able to get the reward like the Sahaba, even if we gave gold uh, like Mount Uhud. And the other narration about getting the reward of like the 50 of the Sahaba, the people who are to come not to see me and believe in me. So how do you reconcile between these two hadith? Jazakallah. Number four, please. I want to know if... 
Yeah. I want to know if a wife can give fidya on behalf of her deceased husband. Would that benefit him? Uh, the last question, please, fifth one. Uh, ask the five five. Well, I'd, uh, please go ahead. Okay. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Um, during Ramadan, is it important for me to finish reading Quran several times or I can revise Quran, say, for example, memorize a surah or revise the surahs I memorized? Jazakallah khairan. Okay, I'll answer now. And this will be give us more chance to address more questions. As for the first question regarding the pregnancy and the breastfeeding, we always say that the woman is always from pregnancy to breastfeeding, from breastfeeding to pregnancy. That's why we say the correct opinion regarding this, whether that she fears for herself or fears for her baby, the, the breastfeeding baby or the baby which is in her belly if she's pregnant, regardless of she fears for both or for one of them, okay, regardless, because you're going to have lots of fatawa, ya akhi. So I'm telling you now one of the five madhabs, some of them call them four, the five madhabs regarding this, that the hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas and hadith of Aisha and hadith Abdullah ibn Umar, uh, Abdullah ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Abbas, they were plunged. Abdullah ibn Umar, he had commanded his wife, okay, not to fast because she was pregnant with his daughter, with his children. And he told her to, uh, to make the, uh, to, to pay the fidya. Also, we had Abdullah ibn Abbas, he said, and there is no making up of the fast. So she, she's allowed, she is under the verse, So if you're going to listen to me, and I'm conveying you to the fatwa of, the one of the scholars fatawa and it's supported by the saying of abdullah ibn abbas and abdullah ibn umar bluntly even abdullah ibn umar he had a daughter not just only his wife she's married to a person from Quraysh, and he uh, and she she was serious so thirsty when she was pregnant and um, breastfeeding so he told her yeah, break your fast he commanded actually break your fast and pay the fidya so we say your wife is to pay the fidya for every month or every day that she broke the fast because she was pregnant or breastfeeding that's why we say the woman she's either breast how can she make up so the method would say that she will make up if she she's fears for herself she has to make up because it's like somebody who's ill uh, uh, this is qiyas ya akhi, but there is nas there is sahabi in us and we don't have somebody from the other sahaba to oppose this so we say the sahabi qawlu sahabi hujja this is our our madhab salafi madhab the sahabi saying is a hujja as long as there is we don't have any other Sahaba to oppose him. So we have two Sahabi, the, with the greatest ones, Abdullah ibn Umar and Abdullah ibn Abbas. The one who say, Abdullah ibn Abbas has got Rukhas, concession, Abdullah ibn Umar, Azaim. He takes, takes the, harder, the harder choice. I need to be off for one second, please. Jazakumullah.
Assalamu alaikum. I'm sorry about that. I have to cut you off. Again, in this, because of number of issues, which is to do with my, as I said, my, I've got a very sensitive case taking place in my country there. Fine. So the, we said the pregnant and the breastfeeding, the correct opinion is that she could pay the fidya and she doesn't fast. Who said so? Abdullah ibn Abbas. She doesn't make up for the fast. So she pay, she, she, so she has got two choices, either to fast, okay, or not to fast. If she doesn't fast, there is no such thing to compensate by making up the days. Because we said there is a nas from the Sahabi, Allah ibn Umar and Allah ibn Abbas, that she will make up by paying the fidya for every day that she breaks up. And that will make it easy. Second question, ghusl of the sister. The ghusl of the sister is the same as the, thing as the ghusl of the brothers. It's except, except for the braided hair. If it is ghusl of janaba, she doesn't do, have to do undo her plated braided hair. She doesn't have to do it because it's too much. But if it's ghusl of the menses or the postnatal, she has to undo it. Okay. Now the ghusl starts just like the, any ghusl, whether it's men or female. Okay. First of all, that is, you wash your hands. If you are taken from the bucket, you wash your hands away from the bucket. Okay. You wash your private parts. You start with this is the ghusl. You wash your private parts. You wash your hands again to take it off. Then you start now making the wudu. All of it. Including your feet, because normally you have a tub that is the water is running. But if you don't have a tub which is running water, then you leave your feet on the last thing. Why? Because you're going to take it out of the, the, the water that you have used. It's, it's not really impure water, but this is to remove the waswasa, to leave the last thing. But if your water is running, make full wudu. Okay? Then you start with your head. Okay? And then you put, and you put the water onto your body. So you start with the right, start with the left. And the maghabin, the areas which is in between. And that's the wudu is finished. Now, if it was ghusl of janaba, okay, or ghusl of any ghusl, and you were making the, and you made the, 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 the ghusl, and if you are making ghusl, if you have broke wind, the broken wind doesn't break your ghusl. It breaks your wudu. So if you have, let's say, finished your feet and everything, and you came out of the ghusl, and you broke wind, or while you're doing it, you only make the wudu. You don't make the ghusl again. Okay? It breaks the wudu. It does not break the ghusl itself. Fine. Third question. How can we reconcile between 50 sahabi? The hadith of the Prophet sallallahu that if in the ra'ikum ayyam al-sabr, verily, verily, that uh, you're going to find the days of sabr, sabr patience. That means the turbulence and tribulations and, uh, and things like what's happening these days. Okay? The one who is holding to what is you are upon to the companions so whatever you're holding if any person in that in that uh, time is holding to whatever you're holding on he will have 50 times the reward of yours so one of the companions which is umar khattab he asked messenger of allah 50 times his reward or our reward he said your, no your reward so what if you for example a companion does charity okay and i do the same charity at this time i will receive 50 times his reward now the other hadith says, Prophet of Allah, if you had, if you had to spend in charity the mountain of gold, or a, a gold that like the mountain of Uhud, you will not reach the same reward if a companion had to spend full. I have to address this as well. Allah Mustaan.
sorry about that again. Um, for the, uh, I need to switch off the recording because the recording has been, oh, I'll just, I'll divide it. I'll take these sessions off, inshallah. Um, regarding the, uh, the reconciliation between the hadith, the hadith does not really conflict with one another. Basically, it says that you're going to get a mighty reward if you're doing the same thing as the companion. But it doesn't mean you're going to match the companion. So you're going to get 50 times his reward. But when you put the reward of his all together, you will not be able to reach it. You will not be able to reach the companion. So there's no conflict. We don't have to make a conflict between them. So the companion in terms of uh, in his total ibadah, you will not reach him. No way we can compare ourselves. No, no generation can compare themselves to the companion. They are the best of generations. You could be more in fasting than a particular companion in the fasting. You could be more in that particular. You could compare your zakah more than him. You could compare. But if you put your totality with his totality, he will be better. Not only that. Even if you are better in everything, he will be better than you because he saw the Prophet And to see the Prophet at that time and to believe in him, it's different from now sitting on your couch like that and you're relaxing. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, ashhadu Muhammadur Rasulullah. Simple. The time of the companions, if you want to say that, you're going to be lashed, whipped, tortured. Your parents be slain in front of you. So it's not like this, and you know, mashallah, you're relaxing, saying, My, I'm a Muslim. No. So at that time, the person who is holding to his deen, huh, he will be killed. We're going to reach the time when you're going to hold it to your teen. It's like a burning coal. But this is the, it was not a burning coal. It was fire. It was death. You're putting your life at stake. That's why seeing the companion in itself is better than your ibadah for 60 years. I think the last, for the, for the following question. That is, is it permissible for the wife to give the fidya on her behalf of her husband uh, who had died? Correct me if I said the question wrongly, because I'm just putting some milestones here, because I, I left it for a long time. So You're if correct, this, mm, so if this uh, woman she wants to give the fidya, the fidya, the fidya that means she, she the, her husband, let's say lived to see Ramadan, and he was not able to fast because he was old age, chronic illness, then she must pay the fidya from his money, not from her money, from his money. To pay the fidya to, to feed the 60 poor people. So when the person dies, the prioritization of his will, of his estate, will be as follows. Number one, the money that goes to free the assets. Let's say, for example, he's got houses, but they are frozen. You can't sell them and buy them until you pay such and such because they've been pwned. So we take the money to be unpwned. This. Number two, second one, is the loans and the loans in categories. Loan number one, that is loans of Allah Azza wa Jal. The loans of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means that the person who is uh, in debt to Allah because of the fidya, like this. Okay, he vowed. So the loans of Allah Azza wa Jal, he had given, he's supposed to pay his zakah, he hasn't paid it. So the zakah goes from it. So that's loans of Allah. Also in that category, the loans is the loans of the people. So that means a person as before anything, before the will, before that is the people will take the money. Then the, la, the, the third issue is the will. And that will is basically what he had willed according to Islam, which is within the third. Then after the will goes to the, to the state. So from the first thing, the, the, to free the state, I would say that. Let me make them as well another category because the first thing you have to as well the funeral procession, because this costs these days a lot. So his grave and his shroud and all of that goes from there. Then the loans, okay, the loans, the loans number one would say to free the assets. Loan number two to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's debts, which is to do with paying the zakah and the fidya. Number number three, the people, and then the will, then the inheritors, the heirs. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. Fourth question, which is better to recite, to memorize, or I'll add to interpret. Okay? If you could do all of them, it would be good. If you can't, 
then I will always al fahm al fahm always understanding takes priority. So if you take some verses and you start to read the interpretation of them, better than just to read the Quran, you understand nothing. You just like parroting. We don't want parrots. We want people. Parrot. He says Bismillah rahman rahim but you understand the parrot. What does it mean? It doesn't mean nothing. It doesn't mean he's a Muslim. Akhi. No, no, no. There are parrots who would say uh, Jesus is one of the three. He would say that. So what does that mean? Make him a Christian parrot? <laughs> because what the, the parrot is called parrot, the baga. Whatever you tell him, he will tell you back. Exactly the same. You could read Fatiha, you could read as well a Christian or a Jewish prayer as well. So we would say that, don't we be parrot? We want you to understand. Allah Ta'ala. Now, give me the five questions. She is asking when she should say Semi Allahu liman hamida when raising from Ruku, and she wants to know particularly how the palms of the hands should be. Okay, let's go to Aman. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Uh, I want to ask if there's no congregational player, uh, prayer of Jummah, do we follow the sunnahs of the Jummah? Can you louder your voice again? If, again? if there is no congregational prayer, do we still pray the sunnahs for Jummah? No, do okay. we follow the sunnahs of the Jummah? Follow the sunnah of the Jummah? What do you mean follow the sunnah of the Jummah? Uh, the ghusl and the... Ah, okay, I understand you. Know. Yeah. Yes. Well done. Well done question. Yalla, third one. She she lives with her husband's family and they do they do not speak to her and they make issues between her and her husband. Uh she said she wants to move out, but she's asking, is it wise for her to ask her husband to move out? He's the only son of theirs. Okay. Wait. We'll go to Abdullah, please. No. Now, go ahead, Ya Abdullah. Ya yeah, Abdullah. Assalamu alaikum, Shah. Regarding the video. Hayakum Allah, quickly. Uh, regarding the video, if you cannot, I mean, feed, I mean, the food to the poor, can you give it uh, instead of money? Because sometimes it's really hard to give the video. And that was the question regarding, I mean, the first question regarding the, my wife. Five. First video. Thank you. Look, okay. Uh, if a family member gave you money to safeguard and it has been with you for over a year, can you take zakah out of it? To, to safeguard as an amana? Yeah, uh, it seems that way, yeah. If not, questioner, please, actually, it's questions from the private sisters class, so they won't be able to clarify, but that's what it says, Sheikh. Yeah? Okay. <coughs> First question, <laughs> where do you raise up your hands and where do you say, Sami Allah, Liman Hamidah? Sami Allah liman hamida as soon as you leave from the ruku'ah. <coughs> so when you raise, Sami Allah liman hamida. So where can it be wrong if you said Sami Allah liman hamida and you started raising? Or you raised and you said Sami Allah liman hamida. Because this Sami Allah liman hamida is while you're raising. So Sami Allah liman hamida. You don't say while you're subhanahu alayhi wa sallam. Sami Allah liman hamida. Okay, that's number one. Number two, where you raise the hand, the raising of the hand is not with Sami Allah liman hamida, is linked to Rabbana wa lakal hamdu. Sami Allah liman hamida. Now I could say, Rabbana wa lakal hamdu. Raising of the hands is exactly as takbirat al haram. This way or that way? Listen, this way, shoulder, or this way, earlobe, to the thumb. This way or that way? So this or that? So when I do like this, my this one will be on top here, parallel to the ear, top of my ear. That's the ear. And this is with Rabbana wa lakal hamd in the following way. You could say Rabbana wa lakal hamd and you raise. Or Rabbana wa lakal hamd together. Say so, Rabbana wa lakal hamd. Or Rabbana wa lakal hamd. You could raise and then you say the Rabbana wa lakal hamd. Third, second question. Uh, do we do the Sunnah al Jumu'ah? Even though we pr we don't pray it at home because we don't. And the question said we we now we don't pray at home. If you're praying the Jumu'ah is different, but you're not praying the Jumu'ah. You're praying Dhuhr. Okay. So in terms of the Jumu'ah, the Sunan, yes, you recite. Okay, you recite <coughs> Surah Al Al Kahf. Yes, you pass the rotation upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay. No, there is no Sunnah Al Ghusl because you haven't got Jumu'ah. So that is that one was linked to the so the the the, the, the recitation of Surah Al-Kahf 
and the passing salutation upon the prophet is linked to the day, not linked to the prayer. But whatever is linked to the prayer is not there. So there is no such thing to perfume, or there's no such thing as well to put the nicest clothes. There's no such thing as well to make the ghusl. Just like the women, when we go to masjids and pray the Jum'ah, we make the ghusl. But the women who does not pray with us, they don't make the ghusl. But they want to come to the Jum'ah, they have to make the ghusl. Okay? So all of that ghusl, uh, anything linked to the prayer. But in terms of the Jum'ah day, still we have the last hours before Maghrib on the day of Jum'ah, the best of the hours where you could make supplication. Also we have the best of the prayer that is in the Fajr prayer of Jumu'ah in Jama'ah. Still, we can make a Jama'ah at the house. It's not linked to the prayer of the Jumu'ah. The Jumu'ah prayer is not there. So we pray Dhuhr. Now, third question. Uh, advice to the purse to the woman she's living with her husband and her husband is the uh, only son or the eldest son in her house. And uh, she's living with him and his family and his family is intervening and all of that. You know, you need, you, know, you need more than just an advice in general. Basically, you're asking to be on your own. Is it, uh, is it correct to me to ask him what is the right way to do? You know, the, per the woman who is clever woman, if she is able, okay, if she is able to accommodate for those little things that are taking place, because their family, they're going to interfere in your life whether you are with them or away from them. Maybe it's a bit less. But still, okay? But if you are going to be patient regarding their shortcomings, and also you bear in mind that maybe they are old parents and they are in need of help, and the only one who's going to help them is your husband. It's not incumbent upon you to help them. It's incumbent of the husband. Okay? So if you are doing that, I'm pretty sure it will work, inshallah, better for you. It will be more rewardable for you. So be patient. Okay? Let your husband decide for himself whether it is better now to move or not. But not to be you, because you don't want to create conflict between you and your husband as well. So why don't you serve his parents just like he does serve his parents? Show some respect. I'm not saying to wash the cups for them, but if you do that, that will be kind. There will be kindness. It will be recorded for you, Sean. That advice usually is the case, Yahwani. It will take a long time, and we haven't got time. So can we just go to the questions? Just short. Uh, the fidya, I've answered the question. I said, no, money cannot be accepted. It has to be given to a third party as money. And that third party will give it to the poor person is in food. Don't give it. If you give it money to the poor person, it will, it will not be sufficient. It will not suffice. Um, this person has got a trust. He's been trusted with a manner with some money. As you pay the zakah from it, you cannot pay the zakah from something you've been trusted with. No. So that means you trusted with him and you're not allowed to use it. If you have borrowed it, no, you have to pay zakah from it because you borrowed it yourself. But if it's been left with you, let's say somebody gave you 10,000, keep it with you. You don't give zakah from it without the consent of the owner. Even if you gave zakah from it, it will not reach the owner because he didn't have the consent. He has to have the consent. Type. We got another 10 minutes. Go ahead. Sheikh, this sister got married when she was a non Muslim. No, no advice is this question. Please, halal haram, quickly. Yalla. Okay, she's asking her husband hasn't given her the Hajj as a mahar that he promised her. And she's asking if she can forsake him in the bedroom until he pays as a put pressure on him. She's asking, can she leave the bed in order for him to pay the no, mahar? No, it's not allowed. Next. Okay, we'll go to Abu and Farid, not, please. The husband is not allowed as well to postpone giving the mahar. This is a condition upon him. But she cannot use... Wrong or wrong doesn't make right. Now, Go ahead, Abu Farid. Uh, Sheikh, um, if you know a family member, maybe they're collecting uh, for charity... Quickly, 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 Abu Farid. No explanation. Go ahead, please. All right, if the charity is collected for charity, but it's not used as it's meant to be used, are you allowed to advise people not to give them the charity? Right. Another question? She's homeschooling her four, ch four children, but she doesn't feel that she is qualified. And she's asking about lots of different institutes where she could send them. Uh, Ahmed, I said to choose the question, which I already gone. Cook, I mean, 
if they forget how if they forget how many oaths they've broken uh what do they do basically no another person abu muhammad please go ahead and uh, can someone else pay the fidya or some or another person? You're too far again, Abu yeah, Muhammad. We'll tell you a number of times, please, Yani. Sorry, Sheikh. Um, yeah, please, Yani. We're making it difficult for us now. Can a can a person give fidya for someone else? Meaning someone else owes it, but you pay on their behalf. Hmm? For example, paying for the the parents that that can't fast due to illness. Can you pay fidya on your parents? On their behalf. On their behalf, with their consent. Yes, anybody else? Can a husband seek forgiveness of Allah for because he didn't pay mahar and he is really old now and he had cancer? He didn't pay the mahar. He died? No, he's alive, but he's he's not paid it. Can he just make istighfar? Where, where, where can, he, can he pay? Where is the wife? I don't understand the question. With the wife, she's not there? It doesn't make sense, yeah, Sheikh. Hmm. He's, I think they're saying, can he just seek forgiveness because he didn't pay it because he's really old now? <laughs> I'm not sure you get, myself. You get, you get old, you get richer. I don't understand. Now, another question. Okay, uh, Abdullah Sunnah, go ahead, please. Abdullah, please go ahead. Okay, before Abdullah, you've got it. Right, regarding the homeschooling, if you can't do anything, well, ask me as well. I'm in the same boat as well. Homeschooling is very difficult as well. Um, you could get help from other people, pay them money, and they will teach you, inshallah. So homeschooling is very difficult. But if you can really invest into Islamic schooling, that will make your life easier, inshallah. Uh, that was the first question, was it, Ahmed? Or was it before it, there was a question? No, I think that was the first question, inshallah. Yeah, and then you said to me something which institute you directed to or something like this. Yeah, same question. She mentioned some names of institutes I don't know in East London. Uh, it is a okay. question that you don't ask me, Akhwani. I'm here to give you halal, haram, not only to give you what is counsel and give you advice of counsel. And which, I don't, this is really a market, did you say me? Right. This person, he forgot how many oaths he had done. Okay, you, for each oath you broke in your village, you have to make a kafara. Now, you don't forgot. You make, for example, if, you're, if you don't know whether it's a three or four, you make kafara for four. Five yamins or seven yamins, seven oaths. You make kafara for seven to make sure that you've done all of them. Uh, can I pick a fidya on somebody else on his behalf? It has to be with his consent. Even if it's to do fidya on your son who is chronically ill or your parents, it has to be with their consent. You will not reach them. It has to be with their consent to give the fidya. So they can give, you could give them whatever you like. Give the fidya, inshallah, on their behalf. And I think that was the last question, wasn't it? Yeah. Because you, you asked me something regarding the dowry here. Yes, the old man. There's no such thing that the dowry is in your as a debt in you for you and for you and you are saying I want istighfar. There is no such thing. You can't. You have to pay the mahr, the dowry. Okay? Even if you die and the wife is alive, the first thing that goes from we said, you remember the funeral procession, and after that the debts. From that debt, the debt of the people, you are in debt to her. So the dowry will be taken away. The dawa, the mahr from the estate before she takes his in her inheritance she takes either a quarter or one over eight depending if he's got children she takes one over eight got no children she takes a quarter and that is after the dawah been taken away because it's a loan it's a debt there's no such thing as called istighfar now it's a debt on him he has to pay it whenever he's capable of doing it now in the you want to ask if you want to ask a question, bottom right corner, you raise your hand with the three dots. If you've asked a question already and you really don't need to ask another, please give everyone else a chance. Is it permissible to pray next to my husband during tarawih or do I have to stand behind him? Where does she stand, Sheikh? No. Abdullah, go ahead. Sorry, it was you next. I'm doing like now. Where they used to do an Islamic channel. I take about 10 questions, five questions, and answer. It's better like that, quickly. <laughs> we're, having, we're having trouble with Abdullah. We can't hear him, so I'm going to have to move on to uh, Abu Farid. Uh, Abu Farid, if you asked, then you really 
can manage without asking again. Ah, no, 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 no. Abu Farid, he, he asked me. Question. Farid, that's what the first question was not. It was his question. Sorry, Abu Farid. No. The question about the charities, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember now because I remembered your Farid. Because Farid <laughs> means unique. So your yes. question has to be unique as well. Because that's I said to Ahmad, he said, that's the first question. He is like me as well, having trouble with memory. You uh, cause proper problems. <laughs> and I, mashallah, I give you the credit. Mashallah, tabarakallah, you've done a very good job. Um, regarding the, um, the, the advice, if you know some charities which are not honest, or they are honest, but they don't know what they're doing, yes, uh, he told them not to pay their money towards that charity. I did that so many times. Is that the answer for your question, Ya Farid? Yeah, it's Zak Habibi. Uh, praying with a wife, praying with the wife, uh, with the wife and the husband. No, no, we don't pray together. Yeah, she has to pray behind him. We don't want the lust to be triggered. That's first of all, and secondly, that's how the Prophet of Allah prayed with his wives. They are at the back. They don't pray with next to him. Naam. If family invite us for birthday, do we go or no? Badi. Next. Abu Muhammad, please go ahead. Sheikh. If uh, is there a certain sunnah no, no, Abu, Muhammad, you ask, Abu Muhammad, put put a big sign on him. Wait for <laughs> him. Take from the question from the paper. If you've got questions from the paper, give me a. Let oh, me finish that. So many. You got a big list. Let me finish from that. It's very big, Sheikh. We haven't done anything. Is it better? If you've got nothing, don't get to the anybody. Don't get to Abu Muhammad and those people are already. Please. Okay. Is it better and rewarding for the wife to forgive? Put a star on Abu Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Is it bet? Is it better and rewarding for the wife to forgive and hope for reward from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? Is it better to what? Sorry, for the wife to forgive and want reward from Allah. That's the whole question. For, for, forgive what? I don't she didn't say general. So I, what, forg- if you give me a question, you don't understand. Don't give it to me. Okay. I don't Can you forgive what? <laughs> Go on. Okay. Can you pay zakah staggered, or do you always have to pay it all on the same day? Next question. So if I usually pay first of Ramadan, oh sorry, okay. Can you pay more than your zakah just to make sure you've not paid less? No. Nah. Next one. If, if one has been negligent with salah in the past and has missed salah due to the negligence, can they do qaza, qada, and make up for it? Next question. What should a wife do if a husband is refusing to pay zakah due to financial pressures? I, I've answered the question. Okay. If husband and wife bought a house and she put a lot of money into it they divorced in this country she gets a certain share but is it permissible because the wife does not want to go against islam she put money into the house yeah her and her husband spent money on the house they're divorced and she gets a share now is she allowed to take that share because uh, she wants to make sure it's halal Still not all, I mean, she paid money she's taking a share so i don't understand what is the halal not halal can you can you explain to me Ahmed? She's already she said, paid. She's already paid money with the husband. Yeah. So even without marriage, you know, if you are partners, you split. You're gonna take your share from the house. So I don't understand what is the halal haram. I think she's saying that the courts in this country they ruled a certain way, and she's saying, can she take the money from that ruling? No, no, she take the share from her house. But she already, you know, I understand the question. If it is a woman, she did not pay anything. She was just a wife. That's understandable, but she paid money. She 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 contributed with the husband, so she took a share. That's halal. Next question: What is the ruling on paying zakah for gold that is for personal use? Next question: If a couple wants to remarry after the first or second divorce, no, no, this has been asked. Okay, when uh, praying... uh, take from the, anybody from the hands up. Nobody. No, no hands left, Sheikh. Okay, khalas, the last question here. Yeah? I think you have to cut short into the question. Look at them. The ones being asked, take them away. Right. First of all, somebody had invited you for a birthday. Don't go for this. Birthday is not allowed in Islam. It's an imitation for the kuffar, and it's something that never been uh, practiced by the Muslims or the companions. So this is not from our habits. We don't really go to these parties. Um, right. Person who's making qada, this is the fifth question. I'm, I'm going to just uh, remember. Myself. Person, he, he wants to pay uh, extra. So he wants to pay extra. Yes, Ahmed? Extra on the zakah. Yes, to make sure yeah. they paid zakah. Yeah, no problem. That's very good to pay extra. And the problem is to pay less. No problem, inshallah. But the question before that is, is the, the zakah all of it? What was that a question? What was the zakah? The second, just before that, there was a question. 
paying the zakah, all of it. Say zakah. Something to do with the zakah, the question before that. Sorry about that, it was not really good notes for me here. A question was, uh, do you have to pay the zakat all in one go or can you pay yeah, it? Yeah, that's the one. Yes. Thank you very much, Zahid. Yes, you, pay, you have to pay the zakat all of it. Yes, you pay the zakat all of it. That's why I put zakat all of it. I put the answer in for the question. Uh, yes, the salah, qaza, qaza, there's no such thing called qaza. If you have forgotten the prayer or you have slept through the time of the prayer, then you pray it once you remember it. There is no such thing that you have deliberately pushed the time you did not pray because you are busy with your phones and all of that, and you knew that there is a prayer on you, then there is no such thing that you can go and make up for this prayer. There's no such thing with qaba for this. Look, when you forgot, or if you slept through, you pray it, and it's like it was your own time. Uh, zakah on the gold, uh, you have to pay zakah on gold, whether it is for selling and buying, or whether it is for you know, uh, adorning yourself and beautifying yourself. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. By this, alhamdulillah, we finish. Subhanakallah, bihamdik. Ashhadu Allah, tastaghfir of the wulaik. Please make dua for me that Allah will solve my matter in my country. Assalamu alaikum. Allah help you, Shaykh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.